Well everyone, iPadOS 26 Beta 8 is officially out to all developers, meaning that we're roughly around two weeks away from Apple's big iPhone event, which will release all the other corresponding softwares to the entire public, which I'm super excited for you guys to get your hands on. But in this video, let's talk about iPadOS 26 Beta 8, see if anything new pops out to us, or if it's just mostly just improvements and bug squashing to get ready for the public release. But before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor, Nomad eSIM, who has partnered up with us again to give you guys the best eSIM possible. Let's get into it. One of my biggest regrets with my first iPad was not getting it with cellular data. Not having to rely on Wi-Fi, especially as somebody who uses their iPad as their main computer, is a freedom that I didn't know I needed. And now that all modern iPads have an eSIM built into it, today's sponsor, Nomad eSIM, is the easiest and best way to stay connected. It has support for over 200 countries with no roaming fees and instant setup right from the app or from a QR code. It's built for travel, remote work, or just for everyday flexibility and to make sure that you don't have to rely on Wi-Fi like I said earlier. And yes, even hotspotting works so you can share your iPad's connection with other devices. It's fast, it's flexible, and works exactly when you need it, whenever you need it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into the what's new, or at least everything you need to know about this new iPadOS 26 beta update. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our images and see how big this was in terms of a build number and build size. So we're pretty much at 10 gigs here for iPadOS 26 beta 8. Again, I'm running on the M4 iPad Pro, the 13 inch variant. I've seen anywhere from three to 15 gigs in terms of size. Also for reference sake, I did install it onto my iPhone and on my 16 Pro Max, it was 8.25 gigs. So that is something to take into account when it comes to installing this and making sure that you have enough room. I always say rule of thumb is double it just in case to make sure it gets installed and installed correctly. And then in terms of build number, if we go into our settings, general, into the about, into the 26 here, you see they were on 23A, 5330, lowercase a. So again, that more than likely means that the next version we get will be the RC edition, probably next week, September 1st, September 2nd. And then the final public release should come out alongside the new iPhone announcement in the second week of September. Apple still has not sent out any confirmation or anything in terms of when it's coming out, but invites should be rolling out, in my opinion, this week. So leave a comment down below if you do get an invite when it comes to that. But when it comes to what's new on here, there wasn't anything too new when it comes to iPadOS 26. So usually when it means that we get nothing new, even when it comes to the settings and accessibility, that means that Apple's really kind of just getting ready to release it to the public, making sure that it's snappy. Again, we learned in the last episode that we can fit up to 29 different applications down here in the dock. So they do get extremely small down here, which is, I think is actually a great thing. The more the merrier. So if I go here and start pressing on all of these and put them over here, you can see that the dock can get extremely small down here. So again, we can fit up to 29 different ones down here. So it's getting more and more Mac-like. Another thing that we noticed in the last one is if we go into the preview application, again, this is gonna be specific to the iPad right now. This does not work on iOS, but you can grab the little kind of microscope, telescope thing that you put over to get an idea of what liquid glass kind of looks like. So if we go over and hover over, this is the epitome of, in my opinion, of what liquid glass should look like throughout the entire operating system. Again, we've learned over the last couple months since Apple's beta one release that they've been iterating on how much liquid glassiness we want and how much they need. And it's even different on a per app basis. So that is something to take into account. But overall, the liquid glassiness is something that I do welcome. And I actually want them to go back to the beta one version. But if you go over here, you can see that we have the control center. Something to take into account here is that some one of the bugs that I consistently see happening is going to be this kind of phantom space box that happens in the control center when you go to edit them. You do see that when you are in edit mode, you get this pulsating light around each one of these icons. And even when I put my cursor over here, you can see that it is bouncing on each one of the ones that are editable at least. So you can see that these are moving around. If you do want to add a couple, you just press down here. So the phantom boxes aren't recognizable, which is good, but just know that they are showing up there. And this is what it looks like when you are editing the different pieces of the control center. So again, nothing crazy, but it is something that's there. And then also you get this new kind of stretch that's been there for a little while now, but it's even stretchier now and even bouncier as a way to, again, add a little bit of life to the animation and the experience of using the control center. Another interesting UI change that we notice is if you go into customize the home screen, you press the edit button, go to customize here, you do have this option down here to make the icon smaller or larger. Of course, on the iPad, I like to keep them larger just because again, there's more surface area, there's more clickability with it, but if you make them smaller, you can see that the dock down has this little bounce feature. So if I tap this again, you can see that it does bounce back and forth. Again, nothing crazy, but 
something that's kind of pleasant to look at. I'm more of a big app size guy when it comes to the iPad, so remove the actual names of each one of these icons, which is nice, but that is something that is new with this new Beta 8 update. And now let's go into the battery life, because if we go into battery life, we actually had some great battery life last week with the Beta 7 update, and overall, the iPad has been getting better with battery life as the betas have been iterated on. So if we go over here into view battery usage, you can see that on a day like Wednesday, we had three hours and 28 minutes of screen on time with 78% battery used. And the screen off time was about 18 hours, which means there wasn't anything going on on the screen, but it was still doing its thing. And then standby time has been great as well. So four hours and nine minutes on 52%, that's easily an eight hour day. On a day like Friday, 44% two hours and 30 minutes. So it really just depends on how much battery you're using with each one of these intensive tasks. So you can go in here and get some real good analytics in terms of LumaFusion was on the screen for an hour, 45 minutes longer than usual last Friday, get some diagnostics, understand which application is taking up the most amount of battery and why. And then also some other battery usage. If we tap in here, you can see that zero minutes and 50 minutes of background screen on time was used with some sort of USB-C accessory. It was actually probably my viewfinder for my Sony A6100, but battery life, even though it doesn't maybe show on paper right here, it feels like I'm getting much better battery life, especially with the non-intensive tasks. So I'll definitely take that. And then when it comes to just overall usability, you can see how snappy this has been, right? If you start to open up applications, you can see that everything is moving very fluidly. I can move this around and it resizes the way that it's supposed to very, very quickly. Then if I start to open up things like Twitter and the homepage and you know the notes application and if I resize this and make it smaller, and then I can also open up something like the files application, quickly make it smaller as well. So again, everything's just kind of moving how it's supposed to. And then you do have this, again, this motion, this three finger gesture to move everything around and go into your multitasking and see that all the applications that are open are still right behind me. So overall stability has been improved. Usability has been improved. Performance has been improved. Battery life is better as well. And you can see that everything's just working how it's intended. And I can swipe up to get rid of everything. So overall, I've been liking the state of iPadOS 26. Beta 8, public beta should be coming out either later today or tomorrow. Definitely install it if you guys want to see something new. And then of course, RC next week. And then lastly, the public release should be very, very soon. And I'm excited for everybody to get their hands on it. So let me know in the comment down below if you guys did install this beta 8 update, if you're installing the public beta, or if you're waiting for the final beta. But another quick word from our sponsor, Nomad Eason, before we finalize this video. So again, Nomad eSIM bridges that gap between overpriced roaming fees that you get from your domestic carrier and the hassle of getting local SIM cards when you arrive at your destination. So whether you're hopping between countries or just want an on-demand data here in the US, Nomad's global and regional plans let you pick with what you need with no contracts and no surprises. You can install your eSIM in seconds, monitor the usage directly from the application, and use it across iPads, iPhones, and everything in between. So if you do have an iPad with cellular, this is the way to use it right. Check out Nomad eSIM, connect instantly, and stay connected everywhere. There'll be the first link in the description below with some exclusive deals if you guys hit that link. But thanks again to Nomad eSIM for partnering up with 9 to 5 back. Let's finish up this video. Well, everyone, that'll do it for this video. As you saw, there weren't too many new features or changes. Again, things are just getting more fluid, a lot quicker. Battery life is improving. All the animations are finally kind of coming into fruition with a lot less kind of of those tweaks and glitches that keep happening, like in the control center and stuff like that. But again, probably in two-ish weeks, you will be able to finally install iPadOS 26 on your main device confidently and be able to run all these brand new windowing systems and the multitasking and the new file system and see if the iPad can finally be your end-all be-all computer, which again, if you guys have seen my content, you know that I absolutely think so. But that'll do it for this video. Again, big shout out to Nomad Eason for partnering up with 9 to 5 mac and making these videos possible. Definitely get subscribed to the channel because we have a ton of content coming up, like all the new iPhone 17 lineup of phones, all the new software updates, complete walkthroughs, tutorials, and anything else that you guys wanna see. So leave some comments down below of what you wanna see with this new iteration of iOS coming soon. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. Thanks again to Nomad Eatsim for partnering up with 9 to 5 mac If you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone. I'm so excited for you guys to get iPadOS 26 on your main iPads.